y'all it is crafty hope and i am here working on the art elements challenge for april which is repurposing now i have taken taken this and it is an old plastic alarm clock that had components in it and a face and i've got some of that stuff sitting around here somewhere <laughs> but i took all of that apart and it was white and spray painted it all black now it i have not spray paint's not sticking great to this but i'm gonna put a picture right here So you can see how um, how this looked before, just at least the white and all that. So I spray painted it black, and I've tested out a couple things, um, and I've painted a few little um, thimbles black that I think I'm gonna att attach the bottom to make feet for. Excuse my dog, y'all. Um, but I think it may need another coat or two of black paint. And as you can see, I'm absolutely coated in the stuff. So the next thing I'm going to do, I really, I don't want it to stay black. That just, I kind of want it as a base just so I'd have something other than that white plastic there. So I'd have the acrylic down. And I've got a couple of different, um, like, texture paste. I've got a coarse molding paste and a fiber paste from Golden and a um, art extravagance from Finnebear or I think... I think that's who it's from, um, Prima. It's a white sand texture paste. So I think I'm going to put some of that on there and give it a little bit to dry, but I've also cut out this template here, which is about the size um, that goes inside of here so I can cover up that back. Now I've got to figure out this base here. Um, and then I'm gonna put some stuff on the inside. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. Um, I started with the heavy molding paste or modeling paste and I'm just using a palette knife. I'm going to switch over to a metal one here because that, um, that plastic one, I was afraid it was going to break because that, that heavy paste was kind of heavy and tough. So, and I use all three of these pastes. When I put this on, I really thought I was going to try to do kind of a rusty look to it, but in the end it looks a bit like wood kind of like a bark effect but I like using all three of these pastes because it gives it um, just so much texture and variation and all that you could easily just use one type of paste and just put it on pretty randomly so I made sure I got it around all the outsides and then I kind of did um, some of the paste along the front of it too and I'm gonna put it aside to dry and I pulled out my compass to um, make a full circle to do the insert on the inside because the the template I had cut I realized just was not exact so I used my compass to make it and then put that inside my little clock and found where that bottom piece was and cut it easy enough now here's some foam core that I've decided I'm going to stack on the bottom um I used an exacto knife to cut it, and y'all, look here, I cut my nonstick craft mat, so protect your surfaces, people. So, um, I really wish I had done that, and I am just eyeballing everything using my pen to kind of mark about the size of that, and this time I'm cutting on a piece on top of a piece of tin that was sitting there on my desk. Now, it took two pieces of foam core stacked to get it up to the height that I needed, um, but that's going to work. So for part of the inside, I'm going to use another spool. And so I kind of traced around it on a piece of cracker box and just to get a base for it. And then I'm taking some extra fabric that I had. Um, this is some red fabric. Got a bag of like quilt pieces from the thrift store. And I'm taking some embroidery floss on um, a needle and just doing a running stitch around the outside of that piece of fabric. I really wish I'd use some red floss instead of that blue that was just sitting there on my desk because it ends up showing some in the final result. It's not a huge deal, but I really wish that um, I had used red. Anyway, so once I get that running stitch around, I'm using another piece of fabric inside to give a little texture and then just pulling that tight around that um, cardboard base I made and tying it on. So that'll be a little mushroom top to go on top of my spool there. And I'm using some Aileen's Tacky Glue just to kind of glue down some of the fabric and thread on there. And I'm gonna put it aside to dry. Um, it takes a while for that to dry, so it's gonna stay tacky until I need it. But um, for now, I am taking, that is just some gesso that I'm painting the base of that spool white. And then with the extra gesso, I also cover up my um, 
cardboard backer. And that both of those things are going to get two or three coats of gesso just to get um, get them covered. And this is a lot of going back and forth with painting and letting things dry. So I pull out some acrylic paint. I, the, I've got a brown there and then kind of a mustardy yellow and then also some golden quinacridone nickel azo gold to, um, like I said, I was trying to get that rust effect on it, but it ends up just kind of looking like bark, like wood bark on it. And that is fine by me. It kind of, it works in the end with the little mushroom that I made. So once all that is dry, I trim any of the excess thread that was on there. And since it was still tacky, I went ahead and just stuck it straight onto that spool. See, I had to get, there's a lot of that thread just had to be clipped away. But that stuck right there on top of that. Um, I'm going to go back after a while and paint it. But for now, I've decided while that's drying to take some gold acrylic paint and paint the inside of my clock. Now, I'm, this also will get two coats of it. But I really like the gold to give it a very magical um, glow on the inside because I knew I was going to do a fairy on the inside. So I let that dry. And I have taken my cardboard backer thing and just a piece of of um, some kind of book paper. It was from a, an old time book with a bunch of writing and stuff on it. So I'm using that and I'm just going to use Mod Podge to glue down that paper onto my cardboard backer. Now the gesso wasn't necessary, but this way I can be sure that it had a good white surface. And then I'm taking a butterfly stamp to make the wings for my little paper. It's a Tim Holtz paper doll that I'm using. And I've got, um, what is that stuff? Embossing oh my goodness, whatever you call it, the embossing pad that I am stamping onto some scrapbook paper and then some embossing powder that I'm sprinkling on. Now this has little bits of glitter in it, so I kind of thought that was perfect and magical to um, really make those wings pop and, and shine. So, and then I'm using my heat gun to um, emboss them. And I did three of them so that I could, you know, in case one was a little wonky or whatever, I could pick out which wings I thought were best. So I just, I decided this one whole butterfly was perfect and I'm cutting it down and then I'm just going to fussy cut around the outside of each of them. And I needed them in two separate pieces so that, um, to make up each of her wings, so I could space them really well. So while I, um, I went ahead and cut out the, um, the paper off of that backer there. And like I said, a lot of this is done in spits and spurts because things had to dry and whatnot. So as things came to me and were drying, I did it. So I took a little brown paint to go underneath that mushroom to give it more of a mushroom feel. Something hit me that I didn't like it all completely white. It didn't look as organic as I hoped. And while that was drying, I took that backer piece and -da, I took it to the um, sewing machine and just kind of sewed around the outside of it, more of for the doodle effect of it, just to give it some texture and interest in the background. Um, I know that, again, it's the background, but I wanted to have some kind of neatness to it. So I like, you know, with the spools on the feet and as part of the mushroom, having a sewing part to it really helps. I took more of that tacky glue and glued my wings on my pretty little butterfly fairy. Well, no, my, my pretty little fairy girl. And now I'm taking those little pieces of foam core and gluing them together. Now I've glued this stack together and then I'm going to use a popsicle stick to help spread around some of that glue and just glue it straight inside my old clock. And here's where I realized that, you know, there definitely needs to be an order for things. So I spread out the tacky glue on there thinking I was going to glue my mushroom down. You see, I put it in there, but then I realized I can't get the backer in there. <laughs> so I put my tacky glue on um, the back of that backer piece and stick it on in there and then stick my mushroom down. And I've got this reindeer moss that I got just at the dollar store and I'm just spreading tacky glue on my piece of foam core in there and sticking the, um, that moss right on it to cover up as much of that white as I could. I really probably should have painted that base a green, but it really kind of works in the end. It's not a huge deal that I didn't wasn't sure how that foam core edges would take paint. So, and then I, I, 
didn't video it, but I just used the same tacky glue to glue in my fairy. Um, and so it looks like she's sitting on that mushroom. And then I've got my little spools from the beginning and I am using the tacky glue to glue them on. Now I'm doing it laying down. So I did the back legs first and then I flipped it over and did the front legs and let those dry and with that guys my little fairy house is done I really love how she came together from an old plastic clock into this magical beauty and I hope you like it too so give me a thumbs up make sure to subscribe and thank you for watching bye